Welcome to the WMG Publishing Lecture Series. Um, this one is Carving Out Time for Your Writing. My name is Dean Wesley Smith. I have uh, been a professional writer since uh, 1987. Um, sold well over 100 novels to traditional publishers in New York and um, am now um, doing all kinds of indie and selling to traditional. I'm what's called a hybrid writer. Um, doing both sides of the new world here. And I am, for those of you who have never um, taken a one of the online classes or the other lectures, I'm sitting in my office here at uh, WMG Publishing um, on the Oregon coast. Um, I have a writing office and an, a business office at home also, but uh, um, I like to come up to this. I'm, I'm here usually in the evenings, no one else is around. It's quiet except for you'll hear noise on the highway outside. That's Highway 101 here on the Oregon coast and sometimes big trucks go by and other stuff like that. So. Um, if you came to a workshop here in person or took one of the online workshops, you would have gotten a tour of this big place. Actually, it's gotten bigger because underneath me um, on the ground floor now is Ella Distribution, um, which is a whole separate company and everything else that uh, WMG is working with and Chris and I are backing to uh, get um, uh, books into bookstores, indie published books into bookstores. So, Anyhow, let's talk about carving time out for your writing. Um, there's lots to this. I'm going to give you um, numbers of different methods to do this and some will work for some of you and some will work for others and, I, and, and maybe it'll work for a while and then you'll have to switch methods and that sort of stuff. You're of course free to come back and watch this as often as you want, for as long as you want. Um, I change the password every month. We theoretically will have that uh, automated so you can just get the new password every month when you want it. Um, First off, I need to say here something very clearly. Um, Chris and I both, actually Chris gets more annoyed at this than I do, but Chris and I both kind of get annoyed at this. Um, lots of writers coming in think that professionals like me, Chris, um, other professionals, Neil Gaiman, um, you know, Kevin J. Anderson, Mike Stackpole, and on and on and on. The list goes on. We all started, um, as Chris calls it, we, 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 we sprung fully formed from the head of Zeus. <laughs> uh, and that's what, that's what, you know, beginning writers and, and people coming in think. Oh, you have it so lucky. You know, and it's like, oh, man, all that does is, is number one, it's kind of insulting. And, and number two, it's, it's one of those things where it is a belief system that they're the only person with a job. Well, I'm sorry, but all of us had jobs. All of us started exactly like you're starting right now, sitting there with a job and a family and kids and all of that. We all started exactly the same way. You know, and some of us started earlier than others, some of us started later than others. There is no right time to start. You just all of us started. And we always never had the time. What made long-term professional writers a long-term professional writer? Well, we found the time. We carved the time out, which is the topic of this. And then every time life started to come crashing back in, which it often did, all the time, can't get away from that, you know, life crises, family, jobs, other stuff like that, we would deal with the problem and then carve the time back out again. That's why I said right off the bat that some of these methods I'm going to give you are going to work for a while and then they're not going to work because some life crisis will come crashing in and that. the reality here is, is that we all started in the same place, and it's up to you, your own discipline and your own ability to do these kinds of things and to find some of the tricks. That's what I'm going to give you here. Is I'm just going to give you a whole bunch of methods and tricks and and shortcuts and 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 writer tricks and you know and I'm not giving you any secret handshakes, but <laughs> I'm certainly giving you everything else that that are reality. You still have to do all the work. You still have to want to be a writer. Um, and you have to be willing to pay the price in both time and energy and money and other stuff to go learn and to keep paying the price and to keep practicing and getting better. And this is part of what this is, is about. Let me tell you my situation when I started. I mean, I started in 1975 after I quit being a professional golfer. I went back um, to the University of Idaho to get a degree in architecture, which I was going to become a golf course architect. Now, I had just come off 
playing professional golf, being a head pro and playing, um, you know, chasing the tour for a while. And so that's what I thought I wanted to do. And it, it, it seemed like a good idea at the time. But I also started dinging around with some writing. I don't know why. I have no memory of why. I wrote an enormous amount of poetry. And I wrote a couple short stories and I happened to just happened to to sell these little 1,000 word short stories, they were kind of more like elongated poems, um, to a semi-pro zine at the time in 1975. Well, at that point, I was buying into everything. Man, I had, I had it down. I had, well, I was also, a, I was a student <clears throat> and I was paying my way through college. I had two jobs and in 1977, I got the bright idea to start a used bookstore while I was in school. So suddenly I had three jobs. I was bartending, I was driving school bus every morning and every afternoon. I was going to school full time as an architect, and I owned a bookstore, <laughs> which I couldn't afford employees for. So, I mean, you know, did I have time? No. But what was going on from 1975 to 1982 was that I bought into every myth there ever was in writing, which is why I attack them a lot on my blog. If you ever read my blogs and about why I'm always going after myths. Um, the myths of writing. Well, I bought into every one of them. Every one of them. You know, I had to rewrite every story till it was complete pablum. I had to, you know, write slow because I was convinced that writing slow would make my stories better. When I got done with a story and actually mailed it, oh, I thought it was the most perfect story ever existed. You, you know, it just, it was just brilliant. Well, along comes 19, fall of 1981, and I've been doing this for seven years with no success, none. I managed to produce two, let me say that again, two short stories a year. Again, I was following the English teacher method, write slow, rewrite, da 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 da. Somewhere I caught a clue somewhere or some book came through the door at my bookstore or something and I ended up discovering Heinlein's rules. And then it, almost simultaneously I discovered a book by Ray Bradbury, which I cannot remember the name of to this day, but it was a book on writing or an essays on writing or something like that. Maybe it was in a magazine or something where he actually talked about the real writing process of a professional writer. And then I started reading Harlan Ellison and then I started reading uh, his nonfiction work. And then I started reading about other professional writers, the ones that you could dig in and find out about their real life, not about the persona that they, they you know, that they put out there for their bibliographies and other stuff. Found out how they really function, what they really did. And boy, the minute I realized that, I said, well, wait a minute, I've been running, writing like an English teacher, which means I'm never going to succeed, or I can write like a professional writer, which is a storyteller. And so I immediately decided on January 1st, 1982, to follow Heinlein's rules. And I've been falling off those things and climbing back on them ever since 1982. And I've become a professional writer. And I followed that and I followed other stuff that I had learned and I got in some of the things I'm going to tell you about here in this workshop, I carved time out of my three jobs and I had just got done with law school and I was just, I was so, I'm going to do this. I'm not going to be a lawyer. Clearly I wasn't going to be a golf course architect. I, I, I was bartending still. I needed to do something after seven years of two short stories a year. I finally said, I'm going to carve time out. And I started writing a short story a week. Now, did I suddenly um, have a, a gift come from somewhere and I found more time in my life? <laughs> no. I just did what I'm going to tell you how to do here. With I wish I'd have known some of these things. Actually, back then, I, I'd have got more than a short story a week then. But, you know, I'm just going to tell you that. But the key to remember with this first little introduction here is that no writer, none, I know of none who didn't start off with a life, family, kids, jobs, and all the other stuff exactly like you have. We're no different. The only difference is, is we figured out how to carve time out and we stuck with it year after year after year. And we got better and we learned and we learned how to practice and we learned how to take in knowledge about writing and we kept writing year after year year. All right, so on to the next video and the first thing here about um, how you do carve time out.